issues of the head and neck, improving oromotor function, respiration, and motor control for children with neuromotor disorders. Presented by Mary M. Meek and Christine A. Nelson. Okay, so you have the action of opening the jaw, moving the tongue, closing the lips, and you can control the flow back to where you initiate the swallow and control the, let alone, the palate as well as the molecular movement. They gradually incorporate the reflexes of rooting and the gag and the suck swallow and the rhythmical biting to organize that initial sucking. When we think about intervention, and this is important in this idea of working in an interdisciplinary way, okay, the PT may see the problem differently. Right? Uh, for example, the PT might be more concerned that every time they try to move the child off a midline, the breathing stops. That's a pretty big problem if you are trying to get a movement response. Okay? But on the other hand, the speech therapist is saying, well, I don't understand it. The child's sitting in a nice chair and very comfortable and everything, but they, they can't really prolong a vowel sound. Okay? And the OT might say, well, you know, I want the child to reach out and touch that toy, but they just don't seem to be able to get the arm where they want it. Right? because we need central stability in order to hold that arm in space. And if we don't have control of respiration, we have erratic tone in the trunk, and therefore we lose quality in the arm movements. Notice, though, we give him a neck roll to facilitate maintaining the neck posture. We're trying to get a little reduction that gentle rocking is like a weight bearing over the scapula, and then we can expand the pecs a little better. Okay. Here. Okay. Uh, we are concerned about how the head is sitting on the neck and how the neck is sitting on the shoulders, if you want. Okay? Those are the two areas that are crucial to have this kind of control. And it is here that a child with a history of breastfeeding for a lengthy period of time is going to be at some disadvantage, right? Because it's also helpful to maintain the head more in its appropriate alignment and to move the head with the shoulder. So as the shoulders back, the eyes and the head and the face come toward the shoulder. As the shoulder moves forward, the face moves away. We move into more extension. Her eyes are compensating for the lack of stability in her neck. It should be just the opposite. The neck should be the point of stability to allow eye movement, right? That should be the base for the eye movement. What is happening is that the neck is not doing its job, so the eyes are used in order to give her stability. Before you move that one, yes, ma'am. If you can turn your head to look at her facial profile, you can see that the jawline is still back behind the nose. Mm -hmm. All right. So in her early development, because of the lack of control through the neck, the jaw did not come down and come forward at an angle. Trying to vibrate so that, it. And it's, you can't without vibrating the cheek, so you've got to switch to these. And I always use two so that you make as much contact as possible. And try to go, um, I want to even almost stay in place. You're influencing the upper lip, the lower lip, making contact with the upper lip, but you're not pushing it. And you're not trying to go this way. Just the fact that you're vibrating in place will actually get it to go up. Okay. Yeah. This is simply the other side. You see that one side is easier for him than the other side. Okay. This was also the first experience that he had here. 
And on this side, he's quite tranquil. Okay? By the way, vaginally born children are more likely, statistically, to have tightness or limitation, restriction in the tissue movement or whatever, uh, in the left side than in the right. <clears throat> and you can see here, you were trying this on yourselves before lunch. You can see that just moving upward a little here with him, the lip almost doesn't go. There's not this kind of you know, possibility of changing that lip. And that's oh, yes. the washcloth mitt, and you see, even blotty, we did a little bit Please. of vibration to that lower Please. lip. This youngster is visually Please. impaired. Good girl. Okay. One more. So, and I'm going in an upward motion. So oh, I only I vibrate once the lip too. is closed. Okay. okay. The thing that can happen here is that this area in the lower part of the chin gets tighter, and then you almost have to do the fishy mouth. <laughs> this way.